the astrologer, a man who lived a long time ago, believed that he could read the future in the stars. He called himself an astrologer and spent his time at night gazing at the sky. One evening, he was walking along the open road outside the village. His eyes were fixed on the stars. He thought he saw there that the end of the world was at hand, when all at once, down he went into a hole full of mud and water. There, he stood up to his ears in the muddy water and madly clawing at the slippery sides of the hole in his efforts to climb out. His cries for help soon brought the villagers running. As they pulled him out of the mud, one of them said, You pretend to read the future in the stars, and yet you fail to see what is at your feet. This may teach you to pay more attention to what is right in front of you, and let the future take care of itself. The moral of the story is, take care of the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves. The Dogs and the Hides Some hungry dogs saw a number of hides at the bottom of a stream where the tanner had put them to soak. A fine hide makes an excellent meal for a hungry dog, but the water was so deep the dogs could not reach the hides from the bank. So they held a meeting and decided that the very best thing to do was to drink up the river. All fell to lapping up the water as fast as they could. But though they drank and drank until, one after another, all of them had burst with drinking. Still, for all their effort in the river remained as high as ever. The moral of the story is, do not try to do impossible things. The Fox and the Lion a very young fox, who had never seen a lion, happened to meet one in the forest. A single look was enough to send the fox running at top speed for the nearest hiding place. The second time the fox saw the lion, he stopped behind a tree to look at him a moment before slinking away. But the third time, the fox went boldly up to the lion and, without turning a hair, said, Hello there, old top. The moral of the story is, acquaintance with evil blinds us to its dangers. The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf had been prowling around a flock of sheep for a long time, and the shepherd watched very fearfully to prevent him from carrying off a lamb. But the wolf did not try to do any harm. Instead, he seemed to be helping the shepherd take care of the sheep. At last, the shepherd got so used to seeing Wolf about that he forgot how wicked he could be. One day, he even went so far as to leave his flock in the wolf's care while he went on an errand. But when he came back and saw how many of the flock had been killed and carried off, he knew how foolish to trust a wolf. The moral of the story is, once a wolf, always a wolf. The Bear and the Bees The bear roaming the woods in search of berries happened on a fallen tree in which a swarm of bees had stored their honey. The bear began to nose around the log very carefully to find out if the bees were at home. Just then, one of the swarms came back home from the clover field with a load of sweets. Guessing what the bear was after, a bee flew at him, stung him sharply and then disappeared into the hollow log. The bear lost his temper in an instant and sprang upon the log tooth and claw to destroy the nest. But this only brought out the whole swarm. The poor bear had to take to his heels and he was able to save himself only by diving into a pool of water. The moral of the story is it is wiser to bear a single injury in silence than to provoke a thousand by flying into a rage. The Bull 
and the goat. A bull once escaped from a lion by entering a cave which the goat herd used to house their flocks in stormy weather and at night. It happened that one of the goats had been left behind and the bull had no sooner got inside than this goat lowered his head and made a rush at him, butting him with his horns. As the lion was sitting proudly outside the entrance to the cave, the bull had to submit to the insult. Do not think, he said, that I submit to your cowardly treatment because I'm afraid of you. When the lion leaves, I'll teach you a lesson you won't forget. The moral of the story is, it is wicked to take advantage of another's distress. The Wolf and the Lion The wolf had stolen a lamb and was carrying it off to his lair to eat it. But his plans were very much changed when he met a lion who, without making any excuses, took the lamb away from him. The wolf made off to a safe distance and then said in a much injured tone, You have no right to take my property like that. The lion looked back, but as the wolf was too far away to be taught a lesson without too much inconvenience, he said, Your property, did you buy it? Or did the shepherd make you a gift of it? Pray tell me, how did you get it? The moral of the story is, what is evil won is evil lost, and the actions you sow are the actions you reap. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing A certain wolf could not get enough to eat because of the watchfulness of the shepherds. But one night he found a sheepskin that had been cast aside and forgotten. The next day, dressed in the skin, the wolf strolled into the pasture with the sheep. Soon a little lamb was following him about and was quickly led away to slaughter. That evening, the wolf entered the fold with the flock, but it happened that the shepherd took a fancy for mutton broth that very evening, and picking up a knife, went to the fold. There, the first he laid hands on and killed was the wolf. The moral of the story is, the evildoer often comes to harm through his own deceit. The heron, a heron, was walking sedately along the bank of a stream, his eyes on the clear water, and his long neck and pointed bill ready to snap up a little morsel for his breakfast. The clear waters warmed with fish, but Master Heron was hard to please that morning. No small fry for me, he said. Such scrawny fare is not fit for a heron. Now a fine perch swam near. No indeed, said the heron. I wouldn't even trouble to open my beak for anything like that. As the sun rose, the fish left the shallow water near the shore and swam below into the cool depth toward the middle. The heron saw no more fish, and very glad was he at last to breakfast on a tiny snail. The moral of the story is, do not be too hard to please, or you may have to be content with the worst, or nothing at all. The Lion, the Bear, and the Fox Just as the great bear rushed to seize a stray kid, a lion leaped from another direction upon the same prey. The two fought ferociously for the prize until they had received so many wounds that both sank down unable to continue the battle. Just then, a fox dashed up and seizing the kid, made off with it as fast as he could go, while the lion and the bear looked on in helpless rage. How much better would it have been, they said, to have shared in a friendly spirit. The moral of the story is, those who have all the toil 
do not always get the profit. The Peacock and the Crane The Peacock, puffed up with vanity, met a crane one day, and to impress him spread his gorgeous tail in the sun. Look, he said, what have you to compare with this? I am dressed in all the glory of the rainbow, while your feathers are gray as dust. The crane spread his broad wings and flew up toward the sun. Follow me if you can, he said. But the peacock stood where he was, among the birds on the barnyard, while the crane soared in freedom far up into the blue sky. The Dog in the Manger A dog, asleep in a manger filled with hay, was awakened by cattle, which came in, tired and hungry from working in the field. But the dog would not let them get near the manger, and snarled and snapped, as if it were filled with the best meat and bones all for himself. The cattle looked at the dog in disgust. How selfish he is, said one. He cannot eat the hay, and yet he will not let us eat it who are so hungry for it. Now the farmer came in. When he saw how the dog was acting, he seized a stick and drove him out of the stable with many a blow for his selfish behavior. The moral of the story is, do not grudge others what you cannot enjoy yourself. The Fox and the Leopard A fox and a leopard, resting lazily after a generous dinner, amused themselves by disputing about their good looks. The leopard was very proud of his glossy, spotted coat and made disdainful remarks about the fox, whose appearance he declared was quite ordinary. The fox prided himself on his fine bushy tail with his tip of white, but he was wise enough to see that he could not rival the leopard in looks. Still, he kept up a flow of sarcastic talk just to exercise his wits and to have the fun of disputing. The leopard was about to lose his temper when the fox got up yawning lazily. <sighs> you may have a very smart coat, he said, but you would be a great deal better off if you had a little more smartness inside your head and less on your ribs the way I am. That's what I call real beauty. The moral of the story is, a fine coat is not always an indication of an attractive mind. The Fox and the Stork The fox one day thought of a plan to amuse himself at the expense of the stork, at whose odd appearance he was always laughing. You must come and dine with me today, he said to the stork, smiling to himself at the trick he was going to play. The stork gladly accepted the invitation and arrived in good time and with a very good appetite. For dinner, the fox served soup, but it was set out in a very shallow dish, and all the stork could do was to wet the very tip of his bill. Not a drop of soup could he get, but the fox lapped it up easily and, to increase the disappointment of the stork, made a great show of enjoyment. The hungry stork was much displeased at the trick, but he was a calm, even-tempered fellow and saw no good in flying into a rage. Instead, not long afterward, he invited the fox to dine with him in turn. The fox arrived promptly at the time that he had set, and the stork served a fish dinner that had a very appetizing smell, but it was served in a tall jar with a very narrow neck. The stork could easily get at the food with his long bill, but all the fox could do was to lick the outside of the jar 
and sniff at the delicious odor. The moral of the story is, do not play tricks on your neighbors unless you can stand the same treatment yourself. The North Wind and the Sun The North Wind and the Sun had a quarrel about which one was the stronger. While they were disputing with much heat and bluster, a traveler passed along the road wrapped in a cloak. Let us agree, said the Sun, that the strongest of us can strip that traveler of his cloak. Very well, growled the North Wind, and at once sent a cold, howling blast against the traveler. With the first gust of wind, the ends of the cloak whipped about the traveler's body, but he immediately wrapped it closely around him, and the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. The North Wind tore angrily at the cloak, but all his efforts were in vain. Then the sun began to shine. At first his beams were gentle, and in the pleasant warmth after the bitter cold of the north wind, the traveler unfastened his cloak and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. The sun's rays grew warmer and warmer. The man took off his cap and mopped his brow. At last, he became so heated that he pulled off his cloak and, to escape the blazing sunshine, threw himself down in the welcome shade of a tree by the roadside. The moral of the story is, gentleness and kind persuasion win where force and bluster fail. Thank you for coming by 